guys. Be quiet here. I'll give you guys some some tips and tricks. All right, welcome back to another video. Um, the company has sent me this pump here. It's called the Cube Psych Plus Mini Bicycle Tire Inflator. Um, I'm gonna try it out on my ride tomorrow, but I thought I'd kind of unbox it, kind of have a look at it. It's basically an electric bike pump, so obviously, typically, I take this in my back pocket, and it's very small and takes a very, very long time to pump up. So it's meant to be similar size, all electronic, you just plug it in, um, charge it up, chuck in your back pocket, and if you get a puncture, it's meant to be able to inflate it in under a minute or just over a minute or something. So pretty interesting to see what this thing does. All right, so this is the box it comes in. It is very, very small. This is the pump I use at the moment. It is a Topeak one that also has like a CO2 um, part at the bottom, so you just chuck that in there. Yeah, pretty small little pump. It takes ages to pump up, but I do not like having things in my back pocket. For the amount of times you get a puncture versus the amount of times you have to carry it, I always go for the smaller one, but yeah, when you do get a puncture, it just takes ages. So, let's have a look at this. All right, so here it is straight out of the box. It's really, really small. It's a lot smaller than it looks. Look at that, it's absolutely tiny compared to my pump, which is also a very small pump. Comes with a little um, instruction manual that I'm probably not gonna read. It also comes with a charger and it looks like a little adapter that you can pump balls up with, which I also probably will not use. So yeah, initially it's a very small pump. It comes with like this little rubber casing. Um, I'll take it out. And then that's what the actual little device looks like. Black, with the writing on the top. Uh, I think that's the little button there. There you go, it's on. And then there's a the little pump there. All right, I've got my Jury C75 rear. I have not used this wheel in a long time. It is completely dead flat tubular. So we're gonna turn this baby on and we'll see how long it takes it to pump up. <laughs> oh, look at this fast. <laughs> that is so much better than I thought it was gonna be. That is like, Easily 80 psi already. All right, I'm definitely going to be taking this out on the ride tomorrow and um, giving it a test out. Hopefully, I don't get a puncture, but I kind of want to get a puncture just so I can test it out. Very, very impressed with this. Right, I'm about to meet Ari. He um, convinced me to go for a ride this morning, even though I think it's going to rain and I don't like getting wet. I don't like riding in the cold, but here I am. We're going to do like two hours minimum, I think, just a cheeky Miller's loop. So yeah, that should be pretty good. Um, we finally got some kit made for the bike shop, so this is the new jacket. It's like a slightly better version of the jacket that we had at Copeland. It's so, so nice. Um, it's kind of what the kit looks like, and then we've got like gravel shorts with pockets in them. And underneath, just the normal like pro racing jersey as well. So yeah, pretty nice kit. So I've got my GoPro Hero 10 here. This little Sidecast pump is like pretty much the same size, if not smaller, so it's not gonna take up a hell of a lot of room in the back pocket. I usually put my pump in the middle, so that's gonna go on there, and I can still put probably some extra bars and stuff, whereas I wouldn't be able to usually, so pretty excited about that. Ooh. Finally, finally stopped raining here in Marston that ride. I was gonna do like a little bit of a skit where I kind of like stopped on the side of the road and like pretending to have a flat tire and do it up with the um, thing, but it's gonna have to wait for another day because it was seven degrees and raining and me and Ari were just absolutely frozen the whole time. But the main point for today's video is I wanna give five points to junior riders. And I'm kind of targeting kind of between the ages of like 13 and probably 17. I'm um, just like five tips from all my experience. I've done every junior tour under the sun in New Zealand, and obviously I've run a Devo squad, and, and then I've also done Cycle Classic and then all the UCI races and stuff. So, and then at the end, I've got um, a few of my pro mates that have given their advices, and then I've also got um, the way that you can get into the Devo squad for the upcoming season. <laughs> So 
number one first piece of advice for junior riders would be to um, join a club. Um, there's a lot of clubs and club racing is the best way to be able to do um, group rides, meet people that know what they're talking about and also the best way to um, race and train like, in your own region and really work out if you want to drop a lot of money because it is a very expensive sport and I feel like joining a club was kind of the best thing that I did as a junior because obviously we had Tuesday club races, Saturday, Sunday bunch rides, it teaches you to um, ride in a bunch and then on the Tuesday night club races you can do stupid things that you can work out if there's a good idea and you can do silly attacks and like go from the gun and just stuff like that and it really teaches you proper race craft before you hit the um, proper tours and stuff where you're racing and you actually care because you say you don't care when you go to a little junior race um, as an under 17 but you do and you, um, you train and you really want to do well and you won't take as many risks at those races as you would at your club race so definitely join a club and go to every single race and every event that you can and support them because the clubs are struggling at the moment as well. And then my second um, tip would be just to race as much as humanly possible. Um, I did every single junior tour from the age of like 15 to under 19 as pretty much every single one I could possibly do other than the South Island ones because we just couldn't afford to get there. I did Tiaramudu junior tour, I did Manawatu junior tour, I did every single junior tour, all the one day races that I'm around the region in Wellington. We drive to the Hawks Bay, I do all of their club racing, I do all of my own club racing. Just race as much as humanly possible. Because the only way you're gonna work out how things work in the sport is by racing and just um, being involved. So yeah, my second piece of advice would just be race as much as humanly possible. Then also my third piece of advice, um, which I really didn't do well as a junior, is ride other bikes. Like something that I didn't do was cross training. I didn't, I just rode my bike. All I was allowed to do in my own head, that wasn't my coaches or anything, was just road bike, road bike, road bike. Group ride, road bike, road race. I didn't do any cyclocross. I didn't do any mountain biking. I didn't do any gravel riding. I didn't do much track. I did track for one year. But other than that, I was so fixated on my goal of becoming a roadie that all I did was ride road. Whereas I wish in the winter months I hadn't dragged myself out because now um, that I'm 22, I've done so much riding around my region. I've ridden every single road. I've done every group ride. And I know if it's gonna be a horrible day that I don't wanna go out. And I wish that um, I had done a little bit more and I'd done a bit of mountain biking and stuff. And it's also really good for your skills to do cyclocross and mountain biking as a junior. So that when you get into those big bunches and especially the big bunch finishes, in elite racing and pro racing, you actually kind of know what to do and know, know where to put your wheel in them. And then hopefully you've got the skills if someone falls on you or lends on you that you're not gonna stack it and take out the whole bunch because no one likes those type of people. And then number four is do not fixate on power. Until you get to under 19, do not worry about your power. Stop comparing your numbers to all the other athletes and stuff. Power is so subjective to yourself that I've worked out. You constantly hear about other people's power numbers and power to weight. And yes, to a point, on the hill, especially a mountain stage, power to weight is super important. But on the flat, power is very, very subjective and it doesn't actually matter. The most powerful person is never gonna win the race. If that happened every time, it would be a very, very boring sport. Um, you have to have enough power, so you use your power meter to get fit, but do not worry about it during a race and don't compare your numbers after as well. Your numbers have nothing to do with where you put your nose in the wind, they have nothing to do with your tactics on the day, and they really aren't the statistic you should be worrying about in the sport. People don't always sign pro contracts because of their numbers, also the results they have, and the best way to get results is um, putting yourself out there and knowing how to actually ride a bike. And then my fifth piece of advice is still enjoy yourself. If there's other things you like doing, it's really good to be able to take yourself away from the sport because it's very, um, it takes over your whole life cycling and all you do is you can fixate on it and all you can care about. It. So if you have a bad day on the bike, it will ruin your actual day. And remember cycling isn't the most important thing in the world. So it's nice to be able to, if you do have a bad day on the bike, you can go out and you can go and play a game of football with your friends or play some rugby or go and have a beer. Don't worry too much about the calories and stuff. Um, or if you're underage, obviously go and hang out with your mates and go play video games and stuff. Just don't fixate just on cycling like I did. Because um, then when you do end up saying, oh bugger it, and the first time I retired, then you go out and you have big blowouts and then it's really hard to come back. Um, but yeah. That's kind of my last piece of advice. Just actually enjoy yourself and enjoy riding your bike. And if you really don't want to ride your bike one day, you don't have to. Just go and do double day next time. So I also messaged some of my mates. I've got George Jackson from Black Spoke. So he's um, pro um, Conti at the moment. Then Nick White and Ethan Crane, who are also um, Conti. Project Echelon and Bridge Lane, so an Australian team. 
um, Conti team and an American Conti team. Um, so I've also got them to give some videos and some advice. We'll play those now. And then if you're still interested in being in the Devo squad, um, wait to the end of this video. <laughs> Don't be like this guy. <laughs> hey guys, just here with Bailey out in Girona in Spain. Uh, cycling Tom's asked me to give a few tips for junior cyclists in New Zealand. So we've pulled a few. Number one, we reckon, is to, uh, you don't have to have the best equipment to be competitive, so you just have to race hard and train hard. Number two is tune up to your club racing, support your local club and all Cycling New Zealand events. And number three is just have fun, don't be too serious. Yeah. Hey team, Nick White here, uh, checking in. So. I've been riding a bike now for about uh, 16 years, so since I was about nine years old. Um, and over those 16 years, I've seen a lot of burnout through junior age groups. So one of the really key takeouts, takeaways I've got uh, from, from growing up through those junior ranks is that you've really just got to do this sport for the right reasons and because you love it and never force it. Like, especially as a junior, if you take a week off because you don't want to ride, or because you got another sport on or because you want to hang out with mates like it's not going to be the end of the world um, and once you get to those under 19 under 23 age groups that's when you can really start to focus on and knuckle down and in those age groups it's a wicked sport for being able to travel to places and see parts of the world you never would otherwise so as an under 15 under 17 you're really in a special position to make the most of it so just do it because you love it and because you enjoy it and because you know it's a cool sport so i think that's the biggest thing i've learned and yeah just keep at it and stick or stick at it what's up guys uh name's ethan crane writer for american conti team project echelon my uh my boy tom wanted me to give you guys some some tips and tricks for uh the young kids coming through the sport so I got a couple of tips. Uh, number one, I'd say you just gotta be consistent with your training. Even if it's just an easy ride, get out and do it. You'll feel much better afterwards. Uh, number two, surround yourself with like-minded people, athletes, cyclists, people that want to see you uh, succeed in the sport and succeed in life. That'll always get you pretty far. Number three, stretch. I love stretching. I think it makes a big difference to your training, helps you recover better, ready for the next day. Uh, number four, I would say, this is a big one, um, is just make as many friends as you can. It's a lot about uh, not what you know, but who you know. So the more friends you can make in the sport will get you a long way. And the last one, you just gotta have fun. The sport is too hard to do if you don't enjoy it, so make sure you love what you're doing. I'm out here, beautiful Tennessee day, doing some efforts. Uh, hopefully I'll see you guys out on the road one day. Cheers. All right, I hope you took some advice from those boys. Obviously these guys have done what you guys all want to do eventually, and it's signed to a semi-professional team and kind of work your way up the ranks to hopefully go pro. So that's kind of some advice from these guys. Multiple national champions and um, national titles and race wins between the three of them so thanks boys for doing those videos but if you are um, under 17 under 19 and you're interested in becoming a new member of the Devo squad we've just moved Ollie Scott so he's our Auckland rider from the Devo squad we've just moved him from an under 19 Devo rider and we've pushed him into the Copeland's kit so he will be riding Copeland's kit wind space bike and he is going to take over Toby Evans spot on Copeland's where he was like our under 19 development rider so um, congratulations to Ollie. everyone should give a big ups to him, he's worked really hard for that spot. But what that does mean is it's opened up two or three spots. So I'm looking for two first year under 17 riders that want to join the squad, and then potentially one um, second year under 17 and one first year under 19. But I'm open to all applications, if you think you might have what it takes, please please send um, an email, all the information uh, will be in the description of this video. Tag this video and um, show your friends if you think that there could be a good opportunity. When Ollie decided to send his application in for the Devo squad, he had only ever ridden schools racing, he hadn't done anything outside of his school, he hadn't been to any tours before we took him, and he hadn't really worked out his potential in the sport before we got him to Yunker Tour where he won two stages. So you never know, just because you haven't proved yourself yet doesn't mean that you're not um, fit for the team. So please 
send your applications in and you never know. But yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and remember, if you know anyone that could be on the Duo Squad, just let them know, send them this video and it could be a massive opportunity. I really do like encouraging the young kids and um, being able to take them to the races that I couldn't before. So yeah, please subscribe to the channel and like this video. And yeah, never seen one of these before. I think it's called a paddock, eh?